Hi friends, welcome to Classic Education YouTube channel. Today we are going to learn about some river system and the one cooperation or the grouping associated with the river system. See this world is full of rivers. There are hundreds and thousands of rivers across the world. Some of the major rivers like Nile River, Amazon River, Brahmaputra River, Angze River, our Irrawaddy River, uh, our own uh, Indus River, various such rivers are there. All of these rivers, whichever I have mentioned so far, they are the international rivers. That means they flow in different countries. Across the countries they flow. Some of the you know rivers they flow in only between two countries. Some of them flow in four or five countries. And some of the rivers like the Mekong, it, they flow in more than five or six countries also. That means these rivers have the very much significance in various countries. But when a river flows in more than two countries, or if it if one river flows in more than two countries, it is, you know, will attract some of the issues. There are conflicts bound to arise when it comes to the point of sharing the river water. So within India itself, we have various interstate rivers. These interstate rivers have, you know, led to you know various issues. See this. A Krishna river dispute is there, Kaveri water dispute is there. Within India itself, we have tens of, you know, more than 15 or 20 river disputes are there. But if this is the case within India, but if you, you know, take the rivers of the international nature, they will create a lot of tensions between the countries, right? See, whatever we are going to discuss about uh, today is the Mekong River. We are learning about the Mekong cooperation or Lankang Mekong cooperation. This cooperation is built or this organization is you know made to cooperate uh, between the countries which sh share the Mekong waters, Lankang and Mekong river waters. Now, why this Mekong river or the Lankang Mekong cooperation was in news? Recently, the Myanmar's military government, see, you know that in Myanmar, there is a military rule. This military government hosted one event that is high level regional meeting of the Lankang Mekong cooperation. So the theme of this meeting was solidarity for the peace and the prosperity. That means they want to establish the peace and they want to, you know, see the prosperity of the region. So with this view, with this theme, they concluded the meeting which was held in the Myanmar. So because of this event, this uh, Lankang Mekong cooperation was in news. Now let's come to the details of the Lankang Mekong cooperation. What is this cooperation? It is an economic cooperation. Majorly, these countries, they will cooperate for the economical development there are six member countries in this cooperation. What are those six members? The member countries are the riparian states of the Lankang River and the Mekong River. This Lankang River and Mekong River, these are the two rivers, okay? See, the countries which are located are the, the countries which share their border with the these two rivers, Lankang River and Mekong River, they are the you know uh, members in this grouping, okay? They are called as the riparian state. That means they share the uh, their, dis, uh, their border with the river, okay? Those countries are China, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand and Vietnam. This Lao PDR is nothing but the Laos People's Democratic Republic, okay? These are the six riparian states which are the member countries in this organization. Then, this cooperation came into existence based on the proposals of the Thailand. In 2012, Thailand proposed to create such a body. That is why it was implemented in the year 2015 and officially this cooperation or the LMC, it came into being, right? This grouping is a Chinese-led initiative. Though it is proposed by the country Thailand, but majorly China has the major role. Being the biggest country in the region, being the largest source for this river, this China plays a vital role. Because of its economic heft also, because of its political heft also, China plays a very, very crucial role in this organization. That is why it is said to be the Chinese-led initiative. Now, 
China is a upper riparian state. So let us look into the map where this river flows. What are these uh, Lankang River and the Mekong River? Lankang River and Mekong River, they are the units of the same river course. The river, the Mekong River in its upper course, it is called as the Lankang River. The, the same river in the lower uh, flow, lower course, it is called as the Mekong River, right? Most of its upper course is, you know, lying in the China. China is the major upper riparian state and rest of the five members, that is the Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand and Myanmar, these are the low-lying countries. That means they are located at the lower course of the river. See here, China is the upper riparian state and the other five members, they are the lower riparian states. China, as you know, it is located in the north of this southeastern region. In, in the southern south of China, there are Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, and Myanmar. These are the members. Now, what is the framework of this cooperation? How, in which areas this cooperation, you know, unite is united? See, this Mekong, Lankang Mekong cooperation framework will be carried out. This framework will be carried out through the three pillars there are three crucial pillars in uh, that means these areas they create the pillars of this organization these three pillars are also same uh, in the ASEAN community also right there is a one more grouping in the uh, Southeast Asia that is called as the ASEAN community there are ten members okay some of these uh, five members like China is not the member of ASEAN but the uh, other members in this grouping Mekong, Lankang, Mekong cooperation there are six members except China rest of the five are also members of the ASEAN community right the, uh, the ASEAN community also has the sum of the vital areas okay there are more than three pillars there are six pillars actually see out of those six three pillars are also same in this organization also Mek Lankang, Mekong cooperation they are creating the political stability in the region, economic and sustainable, sustainable development of the countries and social, cultural and people's interaction, promoting the social, cultural and people's interaction. These are the three very, very important areas that constitute the pillars of this organization. That is Mekong, Lankang Mekong Cooperation or LMC, right? There are again five priority areas. These are the, no doubt, because of these three reasons only this organization has been set up but apart from these there are other areas also in which they have cooperate their regional connectivity industrial cooperation cross-border economic cooperation water resource management agricultural cooperation and so on okay see these are the areas in which these countries these six member countries will cooperate okay this is how the cooperation framework is among these six members then the major objective apart from those pillars and the five other cr uh, critical areas there is a major objective to create this organization called LMC the major objective is to deepen the good neighborhood neighborliness and pragmatic cooperation apart from that China to manage the water flow see this river the we have seen in the previous map that the Lankang River and the Mekong River they flow in various countries to seek the cooperation among all these countries, they, uh, this organization has been set up. But China, as I said, China is the major country in the region. It shares, I mean, it has the uh, larger area under the river course. That is why here the China will manage the river flow because it being the upper riparian state, it will control the waters. But to gain the confidence of the other countries also, it has to manage the China has to manage the water flow. If it builds the dam or if it wants to use the more and more water, it has to take the permission of the lower riparian states, right? In this way, China is the, you know, uh, the major country in this uh, grouping. It has to manage the water flow from its hydropower dams with other riparian states. Then sharing the river's hydrological data throughout the year is believed to be one of the most essential measures for the cooperation. Yes, they have to seek the cooperation they have to maintain the cordial relations among themselves but because this organization is set up based on the river course 
देर मस्ट बी द प्रॉपर शेयरिंग ऑफ द रिवर डाटा और द हाइड्रोलॉजिकल डाटा इफ द प्रॉपर डाटा इज नॉट यू नो शेयर्ड बिटवीन द कंट्रीज इट विल लीड टू द टेंशन इट विल लीड टू द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट राइट सी दैट इज वाई शेयरिंग ऑफ द हाइड्रोलॉजिकल डाटा बिकम्स द वेरी वेरी एसेंशियल फीचर इन मेंटेनिंग द कोऑपरेशन अमंग दीज कंट्रीज चाइना यूजेस दिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टू शेयर द लंकांग रिवर्स हाइड्रोलॉजिकल डाटा right this lankang river is nothing but the upper course of the mekong river located in the chinese borders okay this china uses this lankang mekong cooperation as the platform to share the hydrological data with the rest of the lower riparian states now let's come to the mekong river itself what are its tributaries in which countries it flows okay what is its nature and all we will study the mekong river it is a trans boundary river trans boundary river or the international river it crosses the boundaries of the various countries it is located in the east asia and southeast asia right it is located in the southern southeastern part of asia it runs through as i said it runs through the six member countries china myanmar laos thailand cambodia and vietnam according to the mekong river commission there is a commission called mekong river commission it has given some data based on that data this river flows around 4350 kilometers and it is the seventh longest river in asia after our brahmaputra or yangtze river ganga river Sat uh, indus river say after all those rivers this is the seventh longest river in the asia right but it is the 10th longest river in the world this mekong river according to this commission's data approximately 65 million people live in the lower mekong basin that means lower mekong basin is lying in the five countries that is laos cambodia vietnam thailand and myanmar the river basin in these five countries will support the 65 million people that is 6.5 crore people are directly dependent on this river for their livelihood then this river originates in the tibetan plateau when it takes the birth it takes the name of zaku in the chinese it is called as the zaku but after taking the birth immediately when it starts to flow it is known as the lankang right takes the birth as the zaku river but when it starts to flow it is called as the lankang river this tibetan plateau is also the source for other very very important rivers in the world see i will name some of the rivers like vangwe river or the elo river the angze river is there or brahmaputra indus various such rivers are there this tibetan plateau is the you know origin point for various rivers including this angze and the velo river or vangho river this vangho and angze river they are the major rivers in china right lankang is the part of the mekong that flows through the upstream country of china but its end point or the mouth uh, of this river is located in the south china sea right the mouth of this mekong river or the end point of this river is located in the south china sea see this is the river sorry this is the map in which the the river flows see this is china this is china half of this river is flowing in the chinese borders within the chinese chinese border itself right see from this point this is the tibetan plateau from this point the lankang river it takes as the zaku river, birth as the zaku the river takes the birth as the zaku river but it starts to flow as the lankang river this is the lankang river this lankang river flows all through the chinese uh, china country the as and when it reaches the tri point or the point where this laos myanmar and china the borders join at a particular po point it is called as the tri junction when the river enter this join uh, tri junction after this point onwards it is called as the mekong river 
the half of this or the initial half course of this river is called as the Lankang River. Later part of this course is called as the Mekong River. Mekong River flows in the Laos, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam and Myanmar. Okay. These five countries are called as the lower riparian states and this China is called as the upper riparian state. Right. If the China decides to, you know, cut short the water flow, it can build lot of dams and it will cut the flow of the river. Right. In that way, China will be having, you know, major, you know, role in controlling the water flow in this river. So this is the map of this river. Yes, there are issues associated with this river. The major issue associated with this is the construction of the dams. China being the economically very well developed country, being the largest country and being the in the status of upper, upper riparian state, this China has the major role to play. It dominates, it, 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 you know, it, it dominates in this river system being the upper riparian state. This Mekong River has become a potential source for regional tensions. Yes, being the trans border river, being the trans boundary river or being the international river, as I said, this kind of river should be having the or it will create or they will become the potential source for the tensions between the different countries. But this river is also not an exception. Mekong river has also become a potential source for regional tensions due to an increasing number of hydroelectric projects. This is very important. Hydroelectric pro projects. The China is building lot of hydroelectrical, you know, hydroelectric projects in its territory. See, if you look into this map, see, the, the upper of upper part of this point is the China. China has built you know, more than a dozen dams for its irrigation purpose or for electric, electricity generation. For various reasons, China has constructed the dams. But this construction of the dam has reduced the water flow in the Mekong River. See, when there is a reduced water flow, these lower riparian states will get very less amount of water. See, big, when the river uh, is you no know, running with less quantity of water what what happens there will be fishery will be affected the livelihood of the people will be affected the irrigation water available for the agriculture is also you know less see in that way the agriculture will also be affected or the crop production will become very very less see because of these you know, reasons these countries are facing the troubles by the construction of the dams in the upper course of this river. So this has created the tensions. These lower riparian states are asking China to reduce the construction of the dams and allow the more and more water to flow into the river system so that their economy or the economic activity, especially the fishery and the agriculture can be restored to their earlier, you know, levels. So this is the issue going on in this region. What happens because of the dam building in the China, it will lead to the devastating impacts in the form of drought and the less water. Yes, if the subsequently if so many dams in the half, in the, in the initial half course of this river, so many more than one dozen dams are built, what happens ultimately, there will be very, very low quantity of the water. This, the river will not carry uh, the proper water. See, this will lead to the drought-like situations. This, it will be having the devastating impact on the lower riparian states. Okay. That is the issue associated with the Mekong River. Okay. So, the Mekong Cooperation, uh, Lankang Mekong Cooperation and the issue associated with the river. Okay. That is the half of our disc discourse today. But later half of our discussion is related to the Mekong Ganga cooperation. So far we have discussed Lankang Mekong cooperation. But this is different. Mekong Ganga cooperation. Don't confuse. In this Mekong Ganga cooperation, India is involved. India is a member in this grouping. But India is not the member in the Lankang Mekong cooperation. Okay. Now we are going to discuss about the Mekong Ganga cooperation. This MGC or the Mekong Ganga cooperation has the six member countries. So they are India and five ASEAN countries. Association for Southeast Asian Nations. Sorry, Association of Southeast Asian Nations. This ASEAN has the 10 members. Okay. This Mekong Ganga cooperation is the 
cooperation among the six members india plus only five of the asian countries i said in asian there are 10 but in this grouping in this mgc there are five asian countries okay they are cambodia laos myanmar thailand and vietnam the same five countries which were there in the lankang mekang cooperation they are also present in in this grouping also but instead of china here india is present this is the only difference okay these are also these six members are also cooperating for the economical development regional security exchange of the data okay uh, more and more interaction between the people of the different countries the, because of these reasons these countries these six member countries are cooperating this organization or this cooperation was launched in the year 2000 now it is a 22 year old organization both ganga and the mekong are the civilizational rivers that means the civilizations of these countries they have got lot of advantage from these rivers ganga and the mekong india since its beginning the civilization is getting more and more benefit from the ganga river ganga river is associated with the spiritual as well as the cultural life of the indian people there is no cultural life apart from the ganga you cannot imagine the spirituality of india without imagining the ganga's contribution right see in that way mekong is also having so much of civilizational significance or the economical or cultural significance in the southeast asian countries also okay in that way they are the civilizational rivers that means they have fed the civilizations of these countries now mgc is an initiative which aims to facilitate the closer contacts yes uh, by taking the names of the civilizational rivers in these two regions they wants to or this grouping wants to uh, facilitate the closer contacts among the people of these countries okay then this grouping is also indicative of the cultural and commercial linkages among the members of the countries of the mgc down the centuries now this is the map this is the ganga river system okay can you name some of the tributaries of ganga in this region especially the tributary which joins the ganga from the right bank can you name the tributary of ganga that joins the ganga from the right side okay that is the right bank tributary of ganga can you comment in the comment box below okay now this is india and this is the southeast asia in this southeast asia five member countries like the vietnam laos cambodia myanmar and thailand these are the five southeast asian countries plus one india these are the six member countries of the mekong ganga cooperation this is the flow of the ganga river and this is the especially this one sorry this right side this is the our mekong river mekong river it has the mouth in the south china sea that is in the vietnam right so this is the map of mekong and ganga rivers why india is involved or why it is cooperating with the southeast asian nations because india has one policy in the external sector called as the neighborhood first policy that means to maintain the cordial relations within the region to gain the confidence of the countries around its uh, borders india has the concept called as the neighborhood first policy that means for international uh, relations for international activity for international cooperation india wants to step or it wants to give the first priority to the neighbors around it okay uh, the cooperation with the nepal bhutan uh, our sri lanka maldives bangladesh afghanistan these are the our immediate neighbors but there is one more concept called as the extended neighborhood this southeast asia becomes the extended neighborhood for india india wants to establish the cordial relations also because this southeast asia is culturally very very similar to india these southeast asian countries are the buddhist countries that means since the ancient times there are very good linkages between the southeast asian countries as well as the india but because of the lack of importance given to these countries there were you know reduced uh, relations between india and the southeast asia or eastern part of uh, sorry eastern countries that means they are located in the east of the india so now india wants to establish a 
very cordial relation it wants to increase the economic uh, interaction with these countries because of that it has uh, initiated one more policy called as the act east policy so far india had so till 1990s okay this act east policy was initiated in the year 1991 but till then the relation was more this interna international interaction or the external interaction of india was very well with the western side that means with the usa or europe and other canada or uh, other countries in the europe and the uh, north america but after realizing the reduced you know interaction with the eastern states india launched a policy called as the look east policy in this policy india has taken lot of initiatives see whatever uh, the initiatives like the bimstech or bay of bengal initiative for multi sectoral technological and economical cooperation that is bimstech Uh, development of the northeastern region economic integration with the southeast region see this mekong ganga cooperation these are all the result of this policy look east to policy because of this policy india government of india has launched various initiatives with this initiate with these initiatives now there is a increased interaction with the eastern states that is southeast asian countries and in the the india okay see this is the reason why the mekong ganga cooperation has been given importance why india is you know increasing its interaction with the the southeast asian countries now i said this tibetan plateau is the very significant region from the point of the origin of the rivers i have listed various rivers here can you name the another name of this erlang zangpo river which river which major river or which which is the major transboundary river which has the name of erlang zangpo river please comment the name of this river there flows in india also okay now other country other rivers like selwyn river mekong yangtze yellow river indus river okay satluj river iravadi river bhote kosi river and arun river this bhote kosi and the arun river they flow in the nepal okay this iravadi it flows in the myanmar indus river between india and pakistan yellow river in china yangtze river in china mekong in six countries okay selwyn again in the myanmar see these are various rivers which take their birth in the tibetan region okay this is the map see this is yellow river this is yangtze river mekong selwyn iravadi okay this is our ganga river and this is the indus river even satluj also it you know it takes birth in the tibetan plateau see this is the map that is showing the origin point of various rivers in the tibetan plateau okay this is all about this two cooperations related to the mekong river mekong ganga cooperation and lankang mekong cooperation in the mekong ganga cooperation india is the member but in the lankang mekong cooperation china is a member but china is not a member in the mekong ganga cooperation and india is not a member in the Me lankang mekong cooperation okay so this is all about these two co uh, organizations thank you thank you very much for watching this video